Behind me is a gigantic piece of paper that is in every science classroom around the world. The only thing that will be different around the world is that the names of each of these elements, because this is the periodic table of the elements, would be different. Um, the symbols and the atomic numbers and the masses and all the other information that you think is on this table would stay consistent. This table here from DuPont actually has different colors. It has um, a key where it's labeled all the little symbols and everything that's on here. The other thing I like about it is that along the bottom it has a timeline that's very similar to what I asked you to do for the atomic theorists. You know, starting with Lavoisier, Dalton, going through Thompson, Rutherford, Bohr, um, and then Chadwick and Seaborg. Those scientists are actually listed on the bottom in timeline order to kind of show you what they did. But what I want you to do in this video is make your own periodic table that's as good as this one and other ones that are excellent but even better so that you can actually really truly understand all the characteristics that are built in there, all the patterns and all the things that you can predict and know from each element and how they're going to react with each other as you go through chemistry. So here's what you're going to need to make your own periodic table. Four pieces of white computer paper that you're going to tape together. Four pieces of paper that have the copied blocks on them that I gave you in class. You're going to need to cut those blocks out into sections and then start organizing them so that it looks like a periodic table, but not quite like the ones in your textbook or hanging on the wall, because what are called the lanthanides and actinides would be up inside the actual periodic table. Leave blanks in between the lanthanides and actinides, the transition metals, and also the main block to the right of the table, because we're going to be putting some things in those gaps. Start then labeling the element symbols, the atomic number, what state of matter it is, and then when we finally get to electron configurations, you'll be adding those. You'll continue that for all the elements on the periodic table. This is what it'll look like when you're done coloring it, labeling it, doing all the groups, all the families, the different blocks on the table called S, P, D, and F. So when you're done, you won't have a periodic table that will look just like this one because yours will be better. That lanthanide and actinide group actually will not be below. They'll be actually up inside the table where the atomic numbers ascend from left to right. And then when you count the number of electrons that match the atomic number when you do electron configurations, it'll be a lot easier to write those configurations correctly because you won't have that lanthanide and actinide group down below um, confusing you as to where they truly belong on the periodic table.